All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Mid-South Outdoors. Today, I've got something a little bit unique for you. A buddy of mine just bought a brand new outboard from eBay. And I believe he paid 285 bucks for this thing. I think it's a four horsepower, four stroke. I believe is what it was. We're fixing to open it up and check it out. He's letting me unbox it, let me get it together. I've actually got a little 12 foot John boat back here that I'm fixing to strap it on. I'm gonna run around my pond and see how it works. So let's get into it. Let's see what's in this box. So he bought this for his little John boat that is larger than this one, so most likely much heavier than this one. So this one should move a little bit faster than what it's gonna do on his. So already I'm looking in here. It looks pre-assembled like I don't have to do anything. There's a lot of oil all over it. I don't know if that's from manufacturing or what, but it looks like it came with an extra prop. Can't really tell what the material is on that. But just to show you what it is. This thing is coated in oil and there's washers and a, a nut hanging out that just fell out. I don't even know. There's a little nylon lock nut and a couple of washers just laying down in here in the bottom. I'm sure that goes somewhere on here. Oh, it's probably for the handle because the handle's not mounted. But this is how it comes straight out of the box. It's got some kind of oil literally all over it. So it's got a little tag that says you have to add the oil before you use it, but it looks like it's coated. I mean, this whole thing is coated in oil I'm not sure what it's from or what its purpose was. All right, so this is the bag that came with it. Let's see what all's in the bag. Gave us a funnel so we can oil it up. It came with an extra prop. Now this prop looks plastic. I'm pretty sure that's just plastic. Yeah. It's just a plastic prop, which I would say if you're gonna run this thing in a, a lake with a lot of stumps, you probably ought to be cautious of that. All right, it's got an instruction manual. We'll give that a look in a minute. I'll figure out what's in that bag in just a second. So it's got a tool. I'm assuming that's supposed to be the equivalent of a socket. It's got three shear pins, which I'm assuming is for your prop. And it's got a little collar pin in it. And so I'm sure what this is, yeah. So the collar pin goes in right here. And then I'm sure this prop pulls off and then this probably disconnects it. That's what I'm assuming. It probably has a shear pin in it. All right, guys, just straight out of the box, laying in the bottom of the box was two washers and a nylon lock nut. And I assumed it was to mount this, your, your primary steering arm and throttle, but the bolt was missing. And I found the bolt was up in here. So somehow this wasn't connected in transit and it was just rolling around the box. But I did find it, so I think we're good to go. All right guys, to put this throttle handle on, it comes with a, a bolt and this little mounting bracket right here is actually threaded so you can tighten the bolt down 
on here and then behind it you'll see a little your nylon lock nut goes back there this little nylon lock nut back here is in a very awkward space kind of a booger to get this thing tight because of where it is it's down in a hole and everything is in the way all right she's on there so let me just show you it does have a little prop so you can lift it out of the water and push this little spring-loaded pin in and then it just rests right here. If you can see, I don't know if that sun's kind of in the way or not, but you can adjust the trim right here. I don't really think I'd be worried about that very much on a motor this small. But if you did want to adjust the trim, here's how you would do it. And that's just, it would move this out and move it up and move it back in. I don't think you're gonna get enough play. You're not worried about planning this boat out. It does have a little alamite here. I'm assuming you can grease that, um, and which is gonna help this rotate in here. This is air-cooled, so there is no impeller. There's not gonna be any water coming up through here. Uh, so it looks like it's probably just grease in there that keeps this kind of lubricated and spinning. Uh, looks like here's your your choke right here. This, this is where you're gonna push it to start it. And then to run it, it's going to be down there. So I'm assuming that's choke, full choke, half choke, and run. We'll spin it around. You've got your engine oil here. you got your engine stop there. That's how you kill it. Your obvious throttle right here. So low to high is all you have. You can hear all the clicks. That's how many adjustments you have. Obviously fuel goes in here because all of the oil leaked out in transit, which it wasn't supposed to have any in there anyway. I'm going to let whatever is in there settle and then I'm going to top this off. Guys, I will say it's weird that they put all these tools in here. They give you a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver, two Allen wrenches. They give you a 10 and an 8 millimeter wrench, open-ended wrench. And you've got this. I'm assuming this is probably to help you get your prop off. But these are the tools they give you, along with an extra prop. So I guess this is probably everything you need to swap the prop out. So I think you're supposed to keep one of these on you. And they give you two extra shear pins and a collar pin. So this bag and the tools that are in it are so that you can swap the prop out. That's its entire purpose is what I'm assuming here. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to put those shear pins. I'm going to put the shear pins and the collar pin in there too and then i'm probably going to throw this in a ziploc bag and then he can keep it with him in his boat with his prop see that's where your shear pin goes is right there and that's so that if you hit something it shears that pin instead of breaks off one of your blades cool all right all right guys it's got fuel it's got oil i'm going to lower this thing down in the water and we're going to see how this goes all right guys i have the boat in the water and as you can see now that prop is not very far under the water and this is a really short boat but well i can tell you already i'm shaking the boat around and it's leaking gas out right there as the boat's shaking see 
and that's snug all the way up. There needs to be like a little rubber gasket in there. And there's not. There's a little something in there. I can't tell if that's rubber or not. It looks to be rubber, but it's not. It is definitely not seating very well. I'll just try to tighten it down a little more. All right, so it does have a primer right here. I'm going to prime it until I don't see air in this line right here. There we go. Now it's doing something. Cool. All right, I'm going to do full choke. Now they got it on half choke. They cranked on the second pull. And there's nowhere down to run. So if you'll notice when I was running around smoke was coming off and this is not a two-stroke there's nothing wrong with it what it's doing is all of this oil that was all over it it's just burning that off so here's your muffler I guess your exhaust is right here and it's getting hot and it's burning that oil off that's all that is so I'm gonna set the camera up and let you see it from a distance see how fast it goes because it's not really that fast nothing it's just it's in neutral until you hit you see I've already gone two clicks so it says low but it's not actually gonna kick on that's about four clicks five clicks six seven eight there it goes about the eighth click and it's 
starts having forward momentum. Like it's not even kicking in until you hit about that that click. Okay guys, so this right here, I'm assuming is your tensioner for this rotation, right? Where if you back that off, this thing should spin more freely like that, right? But I'm gonna tighten it down about as snug as it'll go. And even then it can still spin pretty easy, but it doesn't do that spin all the way around stuff. Because what you'll notice, I don't know if you could see it, from the view from up there but when i was motoring i had this thing cranked it was running full throttle i took my hand off the throttle and that thing immediately did that number and when it did it about sent me into a spiral which you know luckily enough this thing's not going warp speed or anything so it's not like it was going to throw me out of the boat or anything but potentially that's what could happen is you could spin your boat too fast and this is still leaking fuel right here so that's kind of problematic But aside from that, it seems to be a pretty good little motor. I've never run a four horse to be able to relate it to anything as far as power. But I mean, it is brand new out of the box, but it cranks right up. I mean, there's not much more you can ask for. Right? All right guys, so what'd you think? I give you my thoughts for 300 bucks it's not a bad motor but you get what you pay for so um, it is a four stroke it is a four horsepower so you're not going to be going warp speed out on the lake that's about as light a boat as you're going to see that's a 12 foot aluminum john boat with no decking no equipment no fishing equipment just one person in it and you saw about how fast i was going it was like it was faster than a trolling motor, but not a whole lot faster. So you're not gonna get some ridiculous speeds out of this thing, but I would say the cool thing about it is, I mean, it's pretty lightweight. I mean, you could hold it up with one arm. It's not that heavy. There's almost zero assembly required. The only assembly I had to do was to put this on and then fill this with oil, fill this with gas. Uh, it is problematic that this gas tank is leaking, but I would imagine if you leave it on your boat, this will be vertical and the only time it will leak fuel is when you're driving but that is a problem that needs to be remedied i think if you got some type of uh, uh teflon tape or something equivalent and put on those threads maybe i don't know but this being plastic but this is leaking a lot of gas if you lay it down on its side the gas immediately starts running out what do you think guys would you buy one of these what i would say is if if you were to purchase one of these, I, I say it's a pretty good motor. I don't, can't speak about longevity, uh, but it cranked right up second pull right out of the box. It was ready to go. And every time I started it up after that, it was first pull, first pull, first pull, ready to go. So it is running great. Um, now, um, I would not put this on a river. I would not put this on a big lake where you're planning on going long distances. I just... I wouldn't have much trust in this to get too far away to be able to walk home, you know what I'm saying, or be able to paddle back. Let's see, what else? I do think the prop is a problem because it's made out of plastic, but the good news is, is they gave an extra one in the box. So you need to carry the prop and the tool bag with you in the boat so that you can change it out on the fly because let's just say out in this pond, I hit that tree that's sticking up over there and the prop hit it. It's probably going to bust that prop off. The good thing is, is they did have a shear pin in there, so it's designed to shear the pin before the prop, but we all know how that goes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but carry the extra shear pins and the extra props and all that stuff with you because it, they wouldn't have put all that extra stuff in there if they didn't anticipate that stuff happening. And although it's only a four horsepower motor, when you hit a tree stump with it at full speed, you're probably gonna do some damage to one or the other, the prop or the pin. So I would be prepared to swap those out on the fly if you go to a lake that's got a bunch of trees in the water. Aside from that, I think it's a really great motor. What do you think? Well, anyways, that's gonna do it for today, guys. I would love to know your thoughts on these little guys. This is kind of cool. I wouldn't mind actually having one on a boat out here just in my pond. 
I, I would not trust this on the Mississippi River, but in a pond or a small lake, I think that's fantastic. What are your thoughts? Have you used one? Have you ever seen one of these? Put your thoughts down in the comments and I'll join you there. You guys have a good one.